Hello and welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jamp and Luke Kupfer. Hello. Hi. Howdy. This week, we're talking about bug bites and sore stings. Oh, no. Is it the science of bee stings? It's not the science of bee stings. That's actually a bonus episode at some point soon. Yeah. But first, we've got to talk about Spotify, because we're doing pretty well on Spotify. Hell yeah. We do need to talk about Spotify. (gasps) 33,000 followers. 33,315. Insane. Over 50 thousand listeners so now that we've done spotify i want to move on to youtube really quickly and i want you all to move on to youtube as well because i've got this question for you have you ever been bitten or stung by a bug and what is the worst that you've had let us know in the youtube comments even if you're listening on spotify or apple or anywhere else that you use your ears and not your eyes (laughs) have either of you ever been stung i've never been stung by a bee and it's just never an experience I've had. Really? You've yeah. ne- hang on. You've never been stung by a bee. Never, never. been stung. Never been stung by a bee. Or You've a never wasp. bothered a bee to enough to sting it. No. To sting you. Well, I think I have. It's just never stung me. Wow. I have been whisperer. stung by many bees, many wasps, and also I once stepped on a jellyfish that was like beached on a beach, and now I have to this day I'm terrified of walking on beaches with my shoes off. I have, I have jellyfish stories. I feel like averaging yeah. between the two of you, like there's. Maybe just enough bee stings, right? Okay. Yeah, you can have some of my bee stings. Between us, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe like between you and like between all of us, right? Yeah. Yeah. I used to play outside in the back garden on the climbing frame all the time, and there were loads of bees on there all the time, and they used to get me. (laughs) Maybe it's maybe Australian bees are just not that aggressive. They're just like asleep. Yeah, which is not everything else is so aggressive there. The bees bees are are like, like, well, we got to take a back seat here. Hold on. Yeah. There's no no point in us getting into this mess. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, you might be wondering why I asked the question of bug bites and sore stings and whatnot, because this episode is about the Schmidt Pain Index or the Schmidt oh, Pain Scale. I have heard of it. So you've it's both okay. heard of the Schmidt Pain Scale. Yes. Do you know anything about it beyond its name? Not much. No. No. <laughs> it's a. It's like a scale that's used to rate the pain of different um, stings and bites, and it was like. Um, yeah, like different ants and stuff. There's like an yeah. ant at the top of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I've, no I've no te- spoilers. Okay, I've seen TikToks about this. There's loads of TikToks being like, how much does this bug bite hurt? So, yeah. yeah, I think yeah. this is, I think the TikTok is actually, a TikTok is actually where I got the idea for this mm. from because it was just showing up so constantly. And I was like, well, yeah, let's do a story about this guy that decided to get himself bitten by a ton of insects. Is it yeah. fun for Louis? It wasn't fun for Louis. <laughs> Louis Schmidt, right? That's his name, right? Yeah. <laughs> No, it's Justin Schmidt, Dr. Justin Schmidt, uh, born 23rd of <gasps> March, 1947. Yes. Yeah? You know uh, this guy? Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's 75 years old, but he's still kicking. He's still, like, I, I saw an interview uh, with him wow. from about maybe four years ago now, and that guy is so, so cool. It'll be linked down in the description. Oh, Honestly, wow. he is an idol of mine. He's so, so cool. So interesting. Uh so he's from Arizona, or he is from Arizona still. You know, that doesn't really change. Mm. Um, he's an entomologist, not an etymologist. Do you know what the difference is? Study of word origins. <laughs> As opposed to? A study of uh, word entomologist. A study of, um, is it study of insects? It is. It is the study of insects. Yeah, right. I'm actually going to double check that because I want to make... Sure. With yeah. a T. E-N-T-O-M-O-L-O-G-Y. Entomology, the study of insects, oh. uh, presumably comes from the Greek. Uh, the Greek. Let me let me Google entomology. Etymology. No. <laughs> <laughs> entomology. Etymology. I love it. That's great. Yeah, it's from the. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> it's from the Greek um, entomon, uh, which I believe means insect. It, it means insect. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, an entomon. Yeah, that That's a sense. way better word than insect. That was like a Pokemon. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Go and Where did insect come from? <laughs> <laughs> That's an ugly word. So <laughs> yeah, imagine if you like went outside and you'd like dug a little pit and you're like, this pit is full of entomons. Yeah. <laughs> That's so much cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. So he's an entomologist. He's an expert on Hymenoptera, which is an order of insects, including do you know what that might be? Hy Hy Hymenoptera. Hymenoptera. Is it female insects? It is not female insects. <laughs> that sounds like an Egyptian Sorry, I was just thing. thinking through the etymology, you know. Okay, so he's been stung a lot. So just name some insects you might think. Bees. Bees. Wasps. Yes. Wasps. Locusts. I... Horseflies. Okay. 
Okay, 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 okay. okay. Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's slow down here. Let's Dragon stop. Dragonflies? No. Oh, hold on, hold on. I feel like... Spiders. <laughs> They're not even insects. They're close enough, aren't no, they? No, not at all. <laughs> no, 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 no. Moths? <laughs> Sorry. So, Butterfly. Um, no, bed I don't... Bugs? Okay, right. Bed bugs. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry, bed entomons. <laughs> Insect and bug are actually... Oh, oh, we'll get into what insects and bugs are in a second. Oh, okay. So, Hymenoptera, it uh, includes wasps, bees, and ants. It's very big, Ooh, obviously, because uh, there are a ton, just a ton of ants. Are ants so just, like, similar? So that means ants are kind of similar to bees and wasps, just without wings, most of them. I mean, evolutionarily, yes. Wow. And interestingly, I found, this out the, I found this out the other day, actually, that apparently... Bees are modified wasps that um that, that like lost their ability to sort of what was it? I think they lost their ability to Bee sting bastards. <laughs> to, st- <laughs> to sting as to sting as hard as wasps. Yeah. Right. Um bees are just like soft uh, soft wasps, basically. Hang on. So the wasp yeah. existed first. Right. And I then did not the bee that. attached its sting to most of its internal organs <laughs> as an evolutionary development. Yeah, because they're softer. <laughs> they're, fuzzy little, they're fuzzy little guys. Yeah. Fun. <laughs> they survived by loving each other and not um, stinging. Oh, so sorry. No, hold on. Um, I think I've got this a little bit. I've got this a little bit um mixed up here. I'll 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 repeat, oh, okay. but more correctly. Okay. So what I'd actually heard, and again, don't take this as fact because I'm not sure where I heard it from. Uh, but it does seem to be corroborated somewhere online. Um. Bees on lies.com. <laughs> on lies, yes. <laughs> it's just full of lies. That's where I find all the information for this podcast. <laughs> so, uh, no, bees uh, are essentially, they did a panda. So, they were hunting Sorry. wasps. Yeah, they did a panda. I'll explain. This makes sense. Uh, they, they were hunting wasps that apparently went vegetarian because they got a taste for nectar. That sort of thing. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that, that is, that is uh, an idea, sort of hypothesis. So, are wasps um, carnivores? Yeah. Really? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what wasps eat. Oh my god! Oh, no, insects. wasps are like super carnivores. They're oh. horrific. Oh. Yeah. No, no, you don't want to. Like, oh god, wasps will like. I think wasps can lay eggs in other insects and have their larvae hatch out and eat um, the insects. So they're literally alien from the movie Aliens. Um, <laughs> I suppose they are. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, they also they well wasps also can lay eggs and have you heard the wasp fig thing? The yes. wasp fig thing. Basically, figs are not vegan because they contain little baby insects. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Right. So wasps can lay their eggs in figs, and they're supposed to sort of burrow out. Um, the larva was burrow out and then turn into wasps and fly away. But like, oh. I think there can still be some sort of wasps that turn into uh, the fig. Hold on. If it's, I think it's, um, if it's a female, if if it's a male fig, um, then the eggs are laid in the fig. And then they like they crawl out. But if it's a female fig, um, she'll pollinate it, um, lay her eggs in, and then die there. Figs have sex. Uh, well, yeah. So uh, plants can plants have sex. I thought they. I thought plants were just all most or at least mostly like sex. Both sexes. They can't. Okay. So plants are God, weird. We're getting a real biology lesson. Okay. Today from this Corey. is so. Gosh, this is very the anatomy of a fig. When I okay, when I talk well, I, about something well, I mean, as large as this, what's really difficult yeah. is that I can't say anything. Yeah. Because as soon as I say something, there is there there's something else that yeah. doesn't quite do that. Yeah. So please don't be in the comments trying to correct me with. Oh, what I'm gonna say here is that plants um can plants can sort of uh, either reproduce asexually or sexually. Mm-hmm. Um, not all plants can do all of those things. Um, I don't think off the top of my head. But there are male parts to plants and female parts to plants. Yeah, right. Uh, the female parts to plants are what become fruits. Um, the ovaries of the plant become fruit. That's, yeah. I think, sort of biological definition of a fruit. Yeah. So that's what it's talking about. A male fig and a female fig is essentially sort of, I think, a female part of the fig. Although I don't know very much about figs. It could literally just be that there are, um, there are like specific parts of the plant that are actually just female. Right. I, right. I don't actually, I don't actually know. We can look into this wow. and, and do something about it, but I, I don't know. All I know is that wasps lay eggs in figs, um, and sometimes they, they just die in there. And then you eat them. Do they have a preference for either sex of fig? Are they like, do they lay more in the female figs? I mean, if they if they lay in the female figs, they die. The female figs are the ones that maybe they them. prefer Maybe they prefer male figs. Maybe they probably... <laughs> Oh, that's the nice thing. <laughs> sure, so um, I'm just reading this here from the BBC. Certain types of figs are male and female, and so require a special breed of wasp to pollinate the females. So, yeah, in this case, you've got certain types of figs. 
some are, some are male, some are females. The males, um, they they sort of crawl through. Um, mm-hmm. they, they they sort of crawl in, they lay their eggs, um, and they can fly away. The females, they crawl through a, a hole so small, they, their wings come off, um, and they get trapped. Um, and this, <sighs> this is that's horrible. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh God. I think. Yeah. So I think the wasp dies in there regardless. Maybe it's it's not very clear here, but what it seems to say is essentially that um, the male fig is where you lay your eggs, and the female fig you you pollinate it, but you can't lay your eggs and you just die. You just alone. die there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So oh. don't eat figs if you like wasps, I guess. But entomology and uh, hymenoptera—that's what we're talking about. So Justin Schmidt is an entomologist, specifically uh, studying hymenoptera. Uh, wasps, bees, and ants, all those lovely stingy insects that we that we love oh so much. He started developing the Schmidt Sting in uh, the Schmidt Sting Pain Index. There are a bunch of different names that are used for it: the Schmidt Pain Index, the Schmidt Pain Scale, the Schmidt Sting Pain Index and Scale. All of that. I'm going to use them interchangeably. Okay. Mm. So he began developing that in 1983. We've got a quote from him. We've got a few quotes from him today because I like him. He said. I carried out my first experiment with a stinging insect when I was seven, picking a honeybee off a dandelion and placing it onto the arm of my teacher. My (laughs) hypothesis was that it might sting her, and it turned out to be correct, much to her dismay. (laughs) This is from an interview with The Guardian. Unethical, by the way. In 2018. (laughs) (laughs) Normally, you hear these stories of scientists experimenting on themselves. Not getting their <laughs> teacher and just sticking a little bug near it. Yeah, again. Yes, come here for are a you, Are you telling me there aren't any teachers that you would have wanted to just sting with a bee? Oh yes, yeah. plenty. Yeah, oh, I think I don't think I have much angst towards any of my teachers. Even the bad, the bad ones, or the or the not nice ones, were probably just unhappy. I know for a fact that some of my not nice teachers were actually just really mean people. Just like, yeah. just the worst. Just like I actually had, uh, I had a chemistry teacher that was full on like Severus Snape level. <clears throat> I'm not even joking, and he didn't have the excuse of like you know wanting to you know wanting to have like have banged one of the kid there's mums. He didn't have that excuse even. He was just a bitter guy. And we guy. all know that's a great yeah. excuse. <laughs> you know, it's oh, up there. It's up there. Oh yeah. right. It's, it's it's up there with like not fighting Wizard Hitler number one because uh, you had a two month long relationship many many years ago. That's Dumbledore's reason for not fighting. Well, but um, he's got like a magic pact or something. No, I don't. Sorry, no. The Fantastic <laughs> Beasts films, I I do not take as canon because they are so <laughs> stupid. I have not seen. Okay, so I found out the other day, by the way, that Fantastic Beasts two I had seen. Yeah. I thought I hadn't seen it yeah. because it's so forgettable. And then someone was like, not I much think it was you two that I was talking about. Yeah, 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 it was us. Yeah, we're in, you, you said, oh yeah, so this happens at the, the start and the end of the second film. And I'm like, I guess I've seen that entire film. Can't tell you a single thing that happens in it, but I know how it starts and ends because it's I, yeah. terrible. I know the start and the end. I can't remember anything in the middle. Uh, probably for the best. The less oh, you remember about those films, the better. I know the Philosopher's Stone and Nicholas Vermel pop up somewhere. Weird. Yeah. Weird. No, yeah. no need. No, no need. need for that weird no old man. Oh, Loved him, though. Grindelwald kills a baby. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with J.K. Rowling and writing baby, a baby killing into her stories? A baby on the floor, and he looks at it and just Avada Kedavra's it. I mean, <laughs> it's just a baby. Of all ways to kill a baby, I feel like that's probably... That's, that's my preferred that way. baby's mother to die to save it? Right? <laughs> oh, dead on the floor. Pre- I think, oh. oh, wait, yeah, hold on. Oh, I think they were muggles. I think they were muggles. <laughs> He kills Which a makes, muggle I baby. Think, I think That's it's like, a, yeah. Like that is the most defenseless kind of it's like baby. Stamping on a kitten. Like, <laughs> <laughs> why would you do that? <laughs> but seriously, those films, I've I've disregarded them as canon because I, I found out from someone that um went to watch them to review them to tell people don't watch this. I've yeah. seen it. I'm telling you, it's bad. And they were saying that apparently all of these films up until this point are still before the Second World War. Yeah. As in, yeah. still before Grindelwald's actual rise to power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've just watched, like, we've seen, th- there are three films which detail not even the interesting part of the story. Which yeah. makes sense, because they're Fantastic Beasts films, not Yeah. Grindelwald's you know what's funny? Films. Fantastic Beasts 4 and 5 haven't been greenlit yet, and it's completely dependent on how the third one does, and the third one is flopping. Well, so I mean... They may not actually get to doing the Second World War. Every single, <laughs> every, like, almost every single actor in that has yeah. had some kind of controversy. Yeah. It's just, yeah. they are plagued with bad luck when it yeah. comes to that. 
Yeah, it's not good. Okay. Shall we get back to the stinging? Let's get back on to some other things that are extremely painful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where does Fantastic Beasts rate on the Schmidt Index? <laughs> um, actually, it broke the index. Uh, <laughs> Schmidt is now dead. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, when, I'm, I'm genuinely considering because I know what the worst. Um, I know what the worst sting on this index is. Not personally, Ow. but I've I've heard descriptions, and I'm sitting here thinking. Would I rather sit through all Fantastic Beasts films back to back or go through the, the pain of that worst sting? <laughs> i tell you the worst sting I've ever had was going to the Fantastic Beasts 1 <laughs> premiere and seeing J.K. Rowling there on my way in and being like, oh my God, that's the person that wrote my favourite books ever. And then seeing Fantastic Beasts 1 and then seeing J.K. Rowling again and going, oh... oh. <laughs> That's wrote, the woman that wrote, wrote my that. least favorite film ever. <laughs> <laughs> Forgetting all the transphobia for a uh, second. Yeah. Was she transphobic are... then? When the first one was out, as in, was she out? She's been liking tweets. She... She's been liking tweets oh, okay. for a while. Well, I didn't know at the time, or I, oh, or I hadn't entered into my brain mm. properly, and so I was very happy to see her. And then I left, and I was very sad. <laughs> Little did you know, Fantastic Beasts 2 would be worse. I mean, I'm glad that the films are bad. I am glad. Because imagine if she was really, really good at writing. Yeah. That would be... I'd That'd be, be so annoying. Oh, yeah, I'd be like, oh, man, I'm missing out on all of this. But let's get back to the stings, please. Yeah, because I'd... it is <laughs> more bearable than this conversation. So, um, as I said, Justin Schmidt stung his teacher with a B. Uh, which, by the way, is, if you think about this as well... He murdered a little bee. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. This yeah. is ethical. I know. Right? Like, no. Forget the teacher, but that little bee. That poor little bee. Luke murdered a bee once. No, he did don't murder do a bee this once. Again. <laughs> don't bring this up again. <laughs> bring one up again, Luke. Tell me. What, what am I not to bring up? Okay. I didn't mean to. It's man. <laughs> at best, it's bee slaughter. Okay. At worst, it's bee slaughter. I feel like uh, manslaughter does sort of. It does sort of it, it 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 takes the edge off of murder, right? Yeah. Bee slaughter mm. sounds worse than murder, I think. Yeah. Bee murder. Bee, bee slaughter. Mur- yeah. Bee, oh, bee slaughter is just God. What okay. did you do to that bee? No, it doesn't okay. Happen, no. So basically, <laughs> I grew up being hearing of this story that if you take a bee, if you get a bee and you put it in the freezer, then it falls asleep, and then when you warm it back up again, um, you can tie a little string around it. And then you have a little pet bee on a string. And I thought, wow, this is really interesting. I'd love to love to do this. But then I forgot that I'd put the bee in the freezer. <laughs> can I, can I, Luke, can you just tell everyone how old you were when you did this? Oh, I was like 22, 23. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know you yeah. when you were 22. Okay, maybe 24? <laughs> I, I think, think I you were about 24. About 24, yeah. yeah. But yeah. in my defence... Now, I'm not 24 yet. I, so was un- older than- <laughs> I was unperturbed by my failure, so I did it again. And the second time, it succeeded, and I had little B on a string. So after you killed great, one B, time. you were like, let's do it again. Well, I just kept track of the B that time. And also in my defence, when I unfroze the first B, it was still alive a little bit. Uh, oh. And then so it died slowly. It, di- oh. <laughs> it was almost Captain America B version. I'm I, I didn't sorry. give this bee a quick death. I tortured <laughs> this bee. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'll meet that bee in the afterlife and I'll give it a hug. I think it's. Oh, I don't think it's going to sting you. I'll give you it some, he- some nectar. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I think it's really rich for you to condemn Justin Schmidt for getting his teacher stung when you fully tortured and murdered. He a did it deliberately. Bee. He yeah. did it deliberately. I was just trying to have a pet bee on a string. You didn't. You didn't even figure anything out scientifically from your bee slaughter. He was seven. You were much older. <laughs> Let me be. <laughs> you were over triple his age. <laughs> so, uh, do you know what the difference between insect bugs and arachnids are? Is it the number of legs? What? Okay, that's for, the... uh, for arachnids and oh yeah, we have bugs and insects. They're different. So, bug is just a general word that we use for anything that's kind of creepy, bug- right? Like so, know. spiders could be bugs. B- spiders are bugs. Um, insects are okay. bugs. Even you know, um, uh, d- d- worms. Are bugs to, right. an, almost, to an extent? You kind of oh, think about a bug's life. Think about all the yeah. different bugs in a bug's yeah, life. Yeah, true. 
You know, there are, it's like a, a society of many different species <laughs> living together maggot. in harmony. And I believe that bugs life is the standard by which scientists use to classify yeah. what are bugs and what are not bugs. Is We're it? not going to use ants, <laughs> are we? <laughs> is it in a bug? Ants? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, a bug's life. A bug's life is pretty solid. Is a yeah. bug an actual classification, or is it just a it's colloquialism? Not, no, it's it's a sort of uh, it, okay. It's kind of like fish, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah, you wouldn't necessarily use it in science, but it it it's just how we refer to all of these kind of things if we want to say bugs. Creepy things. Kind. That's nice. Yeah, and it, it it's it's just very broad, and it doesn't it doesn't mean very much on its own. It's one mm. of those things where you know what a bug is, mm. right? Yeah. 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 Right. Just like you know what soup is. Oh, hold on! I'm dead wrong. I've just googled this, and I am I am correct in saying that sort of colloquially, bug does mean anything. Okay. But there is apparently a sort of strict uh, scientific definition to it, which I was unaware of. So, um, it's an insect in the group Hemiptera. Uh, which uh, what do you know? What Hemiptera might mean? That if sounds you translate like it from the Greek. Oh, yes. like two sides. So, Hemiptera, uh, yeah. uh, like helicopter. Oh, or in the ground, in the earth. No, 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 no. wing. Oh, oh. Yeah. so so spiders aren't bugs. No, 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 no. So, um, no, no, no. Spiders aren't. But so, um, so, if we're talking strictly using this strict biological definition, yeah. um, wow. it's an insect in the group Hemiptera, which means it, it, it's got to have piercing mouth parts. Um, wow. So, bugs are a subcategory of insects, not yeah. insects being a subcategory of bugs. So, this is the difference between bug um, in a sort of um, strict scientific context yeah. and bug in a colloquial, colloquial context. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the cicadas, for example, are in Hemiptera. Hemi meaning, I believe, so half, and they're a scientific bug. <laughs> yeah, they're, oh and they're boy. also a, they're, they're also a colloquial. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. So that's that's the difference between bug. Um, that would be a fun and... game show. Is it a colloquial bug or is it a scientific <laughs> bug? I just had an awesome idea for. We can call it bug off. I just I just oh, had an awesome yes. idea. Oh yeah, we could do that. We could do that in Sci Guys Live. Let's do that in Sci Guys Live, our monthly live show that we have. <laughs> That's such a good game idea. We could possibly play. <laughs> <laughs> but we could all. You could also do it for um, sort of fruits and nuts and all of these because there's mm. botanical. There's sort of botanical fruits and botanical nuts, mm. and then there's culinary fruits and culinary mm. nuts. And we could do fruits and vegetables. Is it a fruit or is it a vegetable? See, that is... It depends on the definition. It all fits in. Yeah, that'd be oh, awesome. Yeah. Could, yeah. Be a, could be a berry. Is a berry a fruit? A berry is a subsection of fruit, I oh, believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought they were a separate thing. Yeah. A berry... So I think, strictly speaking, a berry needs... Is, is, gosh. It's a nice little hat that French people wear. <laughs> oh, yes. <Yeah. laughs> I actually don't remember the exact definition of a berry, but I do know that um, a lot of the things that we call berries are not berries. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're like... Sung, like Sun caps. Aren't no, bananas but, technically berries? Yes. So a ba- I think a berry has it's it's one fruit with multiple seeds. So yeah. apples are berries, bananas oh. are berries, but I think the seeds need to be internal. Raspberries okay. are not berries because they are individual little droplet droplety fruits that are you know right um, like that. Um, what so, about strawberries? They're on the outside. I I'm not sure on strawberries because they are on the outside. Yeah. Blueberries, I'm pretty sure are berries. Anyway, why don't we get back to insects instead of <laughs> talking? Oh yeah, talking no, about fruits instead. No, of it. Not, not berries. So um yeah, so insects, bugs, and arachnids. Bugs, um strictly scientifically speaking, are a subset of insects. Arachnids are related to insects. They're you know they're 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 not hugely different, um but they're not insects. Um, arachnids have sort of eight that sort of eight limbs, and there's a few other differences as well. But sort of spiders, scorpions, those would be arachnids. Yes. Um, and insects are they they have six limbs. And octopuses and, are arachnids. I think insects have have to have six limbs, but um no octopuses no, are not. Arachnids. They have eight legs though. They do. They do have eight <laughs> legs. They have eight legs. Yes, they do. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Jeez, so okay. I'm right. Thank you. I'm going to move on from the differences <laughs> between these things because... Okay. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Probably for the best. If you want to know the actual differences, you can Google them. They're very, they're very, actually very easy to understand. It's just that most people aren't aware of them. Yeah. Uh, so treating insect stings. I just want to quickly go over that before we get into the actual Smith pain index. Um, so you, do you, have you ever been stung by an insect? Yes. Yeah, Probably. Yeah, oh, no, not in a while. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, did like because I mean I don't really get stung ever. I've been bitten by ants. I've been bitten by horseflies. Yeah, ants are not midges. Don't get bitten by them. Why? Because you're vegan. No, I, I I think they're racist. I've never been 
I've honestly never been bothered by being bitten by insects. I can I had, remember one really? insect bite in my life. I heard that if you don't drink milk, then you're less likely to get bitten by midges. And also, if you don't drink alcohol, you're less likely to be bitten by midges. But I don't know if that's true. I didn't know when I was a child, so I, I was you were drinking, drinking both milk and, and alcohol. <laughs> and together, actually, because my favorite drink was a white Russian. <laughs> what? Oh, you're not joking. No, I was drinking alcohol and milk together. Wow, yeah. what a yeah. life you've lived. Oh, fantastic life. That's nice, isn't it? <laughs> oh, so, mosquitoes, of course. I've been beaten. Plenty of mosquitoes. Never been bitten by a mosquito. Wow. Never. I've been bitten by one mystery insect once on my leg, and that was horrific. The one non-racist wow. insect. The one, yeah, you know, it's an ally. <laughs> I'm also convinced... I'll bite you. Don't yeah. worry. I'm not prejudiced. I'm also convinced I've been bitten by spiders, but not bad ones. Not in Australia, hopefully. Yeah, but no, not bad ones. Jesus. I mean, what, <laughs> not bad one in Australia is like, well, you go to hospital. You don't die. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um... Insect stings are actually usually fine. I mean, unless they're very, very... I mean, okay, we're saying insects as well. So spider, I mean, yeah, but let's say like... Colloquial bug, colloquial bug, bug stings. Colloquial bug sting. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So the Schmidt pain insect is... Uh, the Schmidt pain index is about sort of, I think, just insect stings. At least I've only seen insects okay. on there. But um, yeah, just generally to treat an insect sting, it's not hugely an issue unless the insects are specifically very bad which is, they usually aren't yeah. um i don't even think i don't even know off the top of my head if there are any, any any insects with um sort of bites strong enough to actively harm you seriously unless malaria that's not the insect bite though no i know yeah yeah, yeah. that's like yeah you know what i mean but the difference is is negligible when you now have malaria yeah i suppose i suppose true. <laughs> yes <laughs> i cannot dispute to that <laughs> but uh yeah no unless you're having an allergic reaction uh, usually insect mm. bites are fine. Uh, you just they're just itchy and, yeah. and red and all that Not stuff. Right. Um, but yeah, no. If you if you if you're coughing or tickling at your throat or tightness in your chest or sweating or anxiety or hives over a huge area of your body, you're probably having an allergic reaction, and you should go to the hospital because you you you, you could die. Yeah, you don't want to do that. No, you don't, you don't that's the aim. So, so those are insect stings. They're they're usually fine. Do you know why? Do you know why they might sting? They do a little vomit in you, don't they? Which ones? Bugs. <laughs> Colloquial bugs. Yeah. I mean, not not all, not not they, all insects. They, they put a little bit of poison in you. Do yeah, they, yeah. So a, a little bit of a little bit of venom. Wow. Yeah. Cool. A little bit. Yeah. Venom. Yes. Yeah. Venom. Because it's being in, injected. But yeah. do you know why they sting? But why sort of insects and and whatnot sting? Ah. Uh. Oh, can I just say that we're going to be saying bugs here. We're not talking about scientific bugs. We're going to be talking about colloquial, colloquial bugs. bugs. Yeah. <laughs> um, why they sting? <clears throat> Is it to digest food? No. No, as in why? Sorry, why they sting you, or why oh, they sting? Right. Why? Why a sting? A bite stings. Oh, so oh, so I mean, why do insects have stings? Why do they have? Oh, venom? why do well, they have venom? To to like like get you away. There's two, yeah, I mean, there's two main things. It's defense and predation. Really. Yeah. So you guys have kind of touched on the defense, oh, okay. but also predation. I thought too much. I thought uh, maybe it was an enzyme for digesting them. No, 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 no. I mean, like, I mean, it's, it could have been how it evolved. Yeah. I don't know how they've evolved. I just, but just to say that essentially to, to the reason that they sting is to kill stuff that they want to eat or yeah. incapacitate stuff that they want to eat or tell other stuff that might want to eat them Stay away from me. Go the hell away. Or I'm going to hurt you. Like, you've seen, yeah. well, you've seen dog spaces after they've got, like, wasp stings and stuff. Like, <laughs> they're all swollen. <laughs> <That's> so <laughs> Ding-a-ling-ling, it's the ad bell. What are we advertising today? We're advertising our spicy merch. Uh, I am wearing the tardigrade beanie that we're selling. Uh, it's a little, little tardigrade boy, little water bear going, ooh. And if you like the tardigrade beanie, you could also get our matching tardigrade t-shirt with a little smiling tardigrade that isn't going ooh, but is going ee. ee. And if you like the tardigrade t-shirt, you might also like the Psy Guys little pin badges we've made. Wow. They don't match, but they do say Psy Guys, and you can show your love for Psy Guys in your pin badge collection, and they're very cute. Yeah, it's the actual logo. And there's still a chance to grab our Psy Guys calendar, which will give you a discount on the future calendar if you get it. No. And an extra mm. episode of Psy Guys, all about calendars. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, the, they will the get calendar that. calendar episode, yeah. Well, that's the spawn from ourselves. Back to the episode. So, this Schmidt Pain Index, it actually won an Ig Nobel Prize. Mm. Did it? It did. Do you know what an Ig Nobel Prize is? It's like the Nobel Prizes. So, it's a scientific award for a high achievement. 
usually for something you've uh, researched. Uh, but it's some Enigma Nobel Prize is specifically something weird, like a weird research study thing that makes you laugh. But then when you actually think about it, it's really interesting. Like you've actually discovered something. Yeah, that's the whole thing. It makes you yeah. laugh. And it makes you think. Yeah. Yeah. And so this won for physiology and entomology in 2015, but it was jointly awarded. And we'll cover the other winner that won that same year in a bonus episode mm. this month. It just doesn't seem funny enough to like warrant being a Nick Nobel thing. Well, mm. it would be like man stings himself with a thousand different bugs. Oh, stings Jen, his teacher. We've, we're oh, we're we're getting into okay. this. No, it, we it haven't touched the surface. Okay, it fine. fully deserves to win a Nick Nobel Prize. <laughs> okay, fine. This man Spoke is. You soon amazing okay. and it's ridiculous he, he definitely I'm deserves excited. it so um we, we want to talk about a little bit why it was made obviously so uh he grew up in an area of the u.s that had a, a bunch of wasps and whatnot and so obviously he was interested in that from a young age and he went on to study them um but he was stung by basically every kind of bee and wasps in his area as a kid um and he was like oh this all hurts the same you know, it doesn't, hmm. the, the, like, um, the sort of, uh, the intensity might vary between them. And this is a direct quote. Um, as a kid, I was stung by virtually all of them. I realized that they registered the same sort of pain. The intensity may vary from one to the next, but they were fairly similar. But an accidental run-in with a colony of harvester ants led to a life-changing revelation. They didn't all feel as I expected they would. They really hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it's again from that um, Guardian uh, interview in 2018. And then uh, to, with uh, Guinness World Records, uh, I believe because I think he's been stung by the most different kinds of insects, potentially, mm. I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, he said, I wanted to find out whether the most painful stings are also the ones that can do the most damage. We could already measure the damage a sting inflicts by a variety of different methods, but we had no meaningful way to measure the pain. And I thought that was really interesting because essentially, we, if we only measure the sort of damage done by insects, we're missing out on so much like important key data mm. because pain and damage don't always match up yeah. right if you think about it like a, a bloody a paper cut hurts so so much. like yeah. i would rather sort of like i've taken sort of the front off of like you know parts of my finger you know just like the skin has just come away and i've not noticed but you know it's a paper cut yeah you know like, oh. it really really hurts yeah it's almost like having a sting is like a way of manipulating over long periods of time it's like a way of manipulating evolution in your favor in that you're not actually strong or big enough to do anything about your own survival compared to something that might hurt you but you're convincing that thing to not hurt you even though there's no real incentive for it to not do that yeah. well, you're fully right yeah that's yeah. that's exactly that is exactly why um a lot of stinging insects have those sort of those sort of um very bold and vivid colors things that are poisonous or or, or sort of uh you know venomous tend to be very brightly colored or very obvious yeah. the sort of a, a posematic uh, sort of coloration yeah. wasps for example have those bright yellow stripes um on the black and yeah. you, you can see a wasp and then you've got hoverflies uh who then go ahead and say well no one's bothering them wasps i guess i'll wear the same outfit <laughs> 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 and like it, there, i mean you you look at a hoverfly next to a picture of a wasp and you're like these don't look the same they don't look the same at all they look quite different but then you see people going absolutely nuts because mm. they're about to be stung by a wasp and it's literally just a hoverfly, you know, sitting about. You've seen a hoverfly, Well, because if right? you just see the flash of yellow, you're like, okay, I'm not sticking around to find out exactly. what that actually is. It's like branding. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like branding. And it, but it works. And that's what I that's what I think is incredible. You know, when, yeah. when you see something that has sort of camouflage that works on us. Yeah. Because, okay, so we tend to see sort of, say, for example, leopards and, um, and lions and all of these other sort of big cats and whatnot that have these colorations that help them blend in. We tend to see them... Um, not in their sort of normal environment, right? Mm -hmm. um, we see them lounging around and all that stuff. We don't see them in the environment where their coloration is useful because they're because they're disguised. Yeah, mm -hmm. and when we're and when we're exactly no wait no what no hold on because <laughs> <laughs> we don't go there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Just, but also, if we did, they'd be disguised. There's like a lion here right now. You don't know. That's true. Mm. Yeah, it could be. Like, well, it's just lion. the color of the wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chameleon. <laughs> Chameleon. Chameleon. Yes. Oh. No, but, you know, and whenever we're watching documentaries, they're specifically focusing in on these animals so that we yeah. can see them. But, like, I've seen pictures that where it says, oh, there's a there's a leopard here or there's a jaguar here. There's some there's some animal here. Find it. And I'm sitting there yeah. like for a minute. And I'm like, yeah. 
Man, I'd be dead. I saw I, one recently where it was like a cliffside and it was like, there is a leopard in this photo. That one. It took me five minutes. I was like, I cannot find it for the life of me. Yeah, we, I, I often think about this when I'm looking at like, if you look at like um, chameleons or you look at like um, the certain type of octopuses that can can um, c- can so conceal themselves and you look at it and you're like, uh, that's actually not very good. It's not, it's not particularly good at actually, but it's because you know it's there and it's, if you think that it's not a good concealment, it's you don't understand your own perceptual system because yeah. if you didn't know it was there, you're, it wouldn't stand out to you. It's just enough that you're when you're not necessarily looking for it, yeah. you you would glance over it and it wouldn't stand out to your sort of wide band attentional system that's just sort of scanning the environment vaguely as opposed yeah. to honing in. No, but that's the thing. When we look at chameleons, we know we're looking at a chameleon. When you know that video of the mimic octopus uh switching between all of its different little octopus forums. Yes. Uh, like, oh I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a flounder. I'm gonna be a stingray. I'm gonna be a sea snake. You know I'm gonna be some sand. And okay. that video you watch it and you're like, oh wow that's really cool that it can look like that. Yeah. Doesn't look like a sea snake though. It's like when you when you see someone that's got a really good cosplay but they don't look yeah. you don't look like the the film character but the cosplay is really well made yeah. you know it's it's exactly like that except if you were to just glance at that octopus you're not going to look in the sea and be like oh man that snake looking thing that might be it. you know that you're looking at an octopus so you're yeah. you, it's yeah. not going to trick you as much but like as you said if you're just glancing at it you're you're going to you're going to see snake yeah. or see stingray or see yeah. another yeah. animal that you don't want to mess with yeah. Although to be fair, I wouldn't want to mess with an octopus either. They are no, they're horrible. Too many legs. Yeah. Sticky. Oh no, smart as well. Yeah. I feel like an octopus. There are. I have a list of animals. Um, in my head, I guess that could probably kill me. Um, and octopus is on there. I say okay, could probably kill me. I feel like there are a list of animals that I think I could beat. Um, and they're kind of like ordered <laughs> from like such a man, but like the most like most able to beat, the least able to beat. And I feel what like I beat up. <laughs> genuinely, I feel like I'd rather go up against a bear than an octopus. Because what? Because you're in the water. Is that does that factor in? Yeah, I'm out of my I'm out of my element. Yeah, a bear. I, I I reckon under the right circumstances, I could kill a bear. But what's the octopus yeah. going to do to you? Crap, well, on my ink, face. Well, ink you in the face first of all. So yeah, you can't well, see. And then they've got eight arms to like. Just keep I punching. could you could scare a bear off <laughs> punching you. You could scare yeah, a bear no off. No bones, Jam. They can punch. Yeah, but they can they can wrap around and strike. Like, yeah, I feel like I could scare a bear off, or with the right weapon, I could stab a bear. Yeah, I don't disagree with you that technically an octopus maybe could do some things to you, but I just think it's much more likely it's just going to swim away. Oh no no, I, I mean okay. Whereas right. a bear is less likely to just flee. Okay, so I'm saying if if it's in it's a, if an animal is coming towards you, yeah. So a bear is charging down at you. Right. Yeah. Depending on the kind of bear, if you make yourself big enough, the bear is going to be going to get scared and go away. Right. Mm. With an octopus, if that thing has decided to come for me, I feel like it's going to come for me. They're smart. You know, once it knows that, but they're it can also beat squidgy. Me. You can just rip it up. Oh yeah, but you're. But that's the thing. They're squidgy, so you try and grab it, and it just. <laughs> but it's not easy under the water; it just slips away. It's exactly. Right. And I'm on a time limit okay. as well. Well, yeah. I'm on the side of fighting an octopus rather than fighting a bear. All right. Well, then I'll fight a bear and you fight an octopus, and we'll see who comes out. Yeah. Top. Yeah. Great. <laughs> what a shame we're both vegan. <laughs> <laughs> and also, this is clearly why I'm banned from the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> Because you beat up all the bears. <laughs> Killed too many bears. Yeah. He's been practicing. That's why he's happy to fight the bear. Yeah. He's not yet banned from the aquarium. <laughs> too scared to go there. <laughs> so back to the scale, the actual scale itself. Do you know what it runs from? Like how, you, how you'd measure something on the scale? It's not, is it zero to ten? No, it's actually oh. one to four. Oh. What? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So there's not, uh, there's not halves or fractions. No, no, okay. it's just one to four. Oh, okay. One, two, three, it's and four. There's not very many oh. definitions of pain, then. No, these TikToks have lied to me. Have they? Yeah. What have they said to you? It's always out of ten. <gasps> it's always like pain out of ten. I th- I'm thinking, when I think about this, and I'm surprised by this, I'm thinking of the the one about spiciness of s- oh, sauces. Oh, school bells or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's um, it's a little bit different. Um, it's kind of similar, though. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder how much two would, million on. The- do you think it would sting a lot to get hot sauce? Like, I mean, obviously it, it would hurt to get anything injected in you, but do you think it would sting to get hot sauce injected in? Mm, well, it all depends on whether it's like inflammatory. I think, isn't it? Yeah. Do you want to try it? Probably. Not. No, no. no. I've got hot sauce and needles. But uh, have you got training as a nurse? Don't need training as a nurse. I've st- st- stabbed people with needles before. Well, Testosterone. Yeah. Okay, right. I could do the whole oh, thing. Yeah, that, to be fair. Yeah. So have I. Exactly. So, all right. 
Oh, so Jamp and I are both qualified? Yeah, you can, we'll both, we'll you both... can inject each other and I'll watch. No, no, we can't inject each other because that would no. harm our inject. We'll, yeah. we'll inject you, both of us. One arm each. <laughs> yeah, different, different hot, hot sauces. sauces. Yeah. We'll get a Nando's. <laughs> <laughs> One of each sauce. Yeah, we'll get the mild, we'll get the lemon and herb, the medium and... What's a hot, hot, oh, and extra, extra hot, hot. Yeah. extra hot? That's yeah. one way to get a, bla- a, a black a card from that? Nando's. No. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I think the extra hot is the, the hottest. Yeah, definitely. I thought there was one more. No, yeah. I think it's I think it's the hottest. Anyway, this isn't a Nando's podcast. This is a it Sunday might as well podcast. Be. <laughs> so the scale runs from one to four. Um, honeybees and wasps are rated at about a two. Uh, I say about a two. They're rated at a two. The reason that it's one to four is because have you ever been to the hospital and they said, how is your pain out of 10? And they've got that little chart of all the little faces that show you what your face would be like. If it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, these I've different things. that. No. Okay, no. so there's a, no. you go to the hospital, you've got yeah. a pain, pain from like sort of, I think zero to 10 or really one to 10 because they assume that you are in pain if you're, you know, being asked about your pain. Uh, 10 <laughs> is the worst pain of your life. Yeah, Zero yeah. is mild discomfort. What if you've lived a very sheltered life? Exactly. I think this is... And let me just go on a little rant here, okay? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to go a little tangent, because I've got some thoughts, okay? <laughs> Have you? About this pain no scale way. that doctors use. <laughs> Corey's most <laughs> nuclear take about the <laughs> NHS pain scale. <laughs> it doesn't work well, because I, like, I gauge my pain based on what pain I've had in my life. The yeah. worst pain I've had in my life may not be the worst pain I'll ever have in my life. You have no idea what people have experienced, and I can't conceptualize the worst pain ever because like the worst pain ever to me is like oh it shuts like I just shut down Mm. right like I've had two experiences where I've been in like incredible incredible pain but I was a child I don't remember that I don't remember what it like actually feels like and when I'm feeling pain okay like yes oh this hurts but like um, does it really hurt? Because like, pain is like almost subjective. It can like you can kind of get to ignoring yeah. it so, with with certain levels of pain. And so then you're like, okay, well, I suppose I wouldn't be able to ignore anything above a five. So if I'm able to ignore this, then is it a below a five? But sometimes it's much mm. worse. And also it comes and goes. Like putting <laughs> pain on a number. And also we can't do one to ten. I think you're easily. thinking it, man. No. When they ask me, <laughs> a number just appears in my mind, and I go seven. Yeah. And make it up. That's usually about seven. But does it? it does it? Um, like. Uh, if, if say, for example, somebody who's male says seven and somebody who's female says seven, do they account for the fact that females generally have a higher pain tolerance? I don't know if they do. Probably subconsciously. They definitely do when it comes to black people. Do they have a, a higher pain tolerance? No, that is a medical myth that doctors well, I don't, think. Yeah, uh, so yeah. uh, doctors think that black people have a higher pain tolerance oh. uh, uh, and that I... results in a number of uh, uh, not very good things. Oh, no. Yeah. Why? What, what, what do you mean, why? Why do they, why do they think that? Racism, Jamp. <laughs> like, surely they have... What, it's just like... Because like, just the, the way it is. Of, I feel like, like after you've enslaved a group of people for a while, like, you, you can like make with, a penny. With the group. women thing, you're like, oh, it's because they're childbirth and whatever, but... Okay, I'm just... Is it because yeah. of, like, the idea of, like, the... I don't want to get into racial stereotypes. <laughs> is it, like, the like the macho thing, or, like, oh, the no. black people run really fast thing, or, like, that sort of Warrior thing? Warrior gene thing, Warrior maybe. Gene thing, uh, yeah. I don't know the exact... Uh, I don't know the thing for it, but it is this sort of... Um, uh, all, all, too commonly held belief um, amongst doctors. I mean, even sort of subconscious, like, you know, that black people have a higher pain tolerance. They can take more pain. Um, and it's... Well, They've so, just had more pain. Up. Right? <laughs> they didn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> they can take it. They've been through a lot. No, genetically speaking, like they can, they can probably, they can probably pass that down, right? So does that mean that they, if 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 a black person says like I'm a seven, <coughs> they assume it's more pain? I don't. You're yeah. you're asking me to. Yeah, I don't you're know. asking me to, to. I don't know. I what just mean how does it do. manifest itself, or do, is it just the? It's just a general belief that some people have. I guess one could hypothesize that it would manifest itself, uh, in more sort of painkillers and anesthetic so you're like oh i don't need to give these this this guy as much painkillers because he can handle it ah see i i wrongfully assumed it would be the other way which is like if if somebody who's black is reporting a lot of pain then you think that that's even more pain because you have this idea that they can put up with um more pain and so if they're saying seven it's actually like a white person eight um, so you got to really take it seriously. <laughs> Man, I think you're thinking of Scobells again. You're thinking of that chili. Like, so. <laughs> take a lot more spice. <laughs> Just take so much. Uh, yeah, no, so uh, that, I mean, that would be that. But the reason that the scale runs from one to four, I kind of touched on it in my little my little uh, sort of uh, mm. thing about, about the pain scale, is that from one to ten, there's too many, there's yeah. too many for you to keep your head in, mm. to keep keeping your head. One to four, 
that is really easy. Nice right? and concise. Exactly. Yeah. Because we can't really do, if you think about it, we can't do much more than things out of five. Yeah. Generally. You know, and like yeah, too many options. Yeah, yeah. Like rating when someone rates a film. I mean, I guess rating films or whatever out of ten is kind of useful. But there's a reason that most rating systems are just five. Unless you go on Just Eat, where it's out of six now. What? Yeah, Why? it's Wait, out of six stars. But th- then because. there's no middle average. Yeah, You're either good or bad. I think it's because it bumps everything up a little bit. Um, yeah, that's so odd. So every something that used to be like four stars is now four and a bit stars. So. Back to this index. There is a four-point scale, as I've said. Um, It records how much... uh, So this is a quote from Dr. Justin Schmidt himself. The index records how much pain an insect sting causes so that we can make scientific comparisons between different species' stings. I chose the four-point scale because it's hard to distinguish between levels of pain in finer detail on a ten-point scale, say. Um, That was uh, his interview with the Guinness Book of World Records. So, you know... um, What was his record for? I think it was, as I said, I think it was being stung by the most insects. Yeah, yeah, yeah I thought probably. Yeah. So, um, most different kinds of insects. Yeah. Uh, not, not, I've been stung by so many bees. All at once. Trust but, me, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's done, this, he's done the pain scale, you know. I mean, I don't know if he actually has a world record. I'm just saying the interview was with the Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah, um, right. Or Guinness World Records, rather. So... Yeah, I mean, th- th- this makes sense. You know, it's it's when it comes to when it comes to differentiating between, uh, a, a, you know, a, a hundred point scale, the difference between four and five is n- you you don't know the difference between that honestly. Yeah, yeah. A ten point scale, you could maybe tell the difference, but it's with pain, it's really really tough. So you're stuck with a four point scale. It makes sense. So the scale itself is compiled in the 2016 book, The Sting of the Wild. It includes 83 stings, but he's now been stung by over 150 species of insect. Oh, yeah, it's mad. Awful. So the way that it works is that uh, essentially what he does is he gives a one to four rating. And then the, that's only sort of half the story because he also has a little sort, uh, sort of short qualitative review um, on the sting. Um, or at least on most of them. So this is a quote from him saying, one of my favorites is the Florida harvester ant, which though it's not aggressive and almost has to be forced to sting someone, still achieves a three on the index. I describe the pain as bold and unrelenting. Somebody is using a power drill to excavate your ingrown toenail. Um, then there's the oh, club horned wasp, oh. which is, it doesn't even, doesn't even like get to a one. He says it doesn't even merit a one. <laughs> and he said it is <clears throat> disappointing. A paperclip falls on your bare foot. <laughs> oh. Imagine uh, like being an, an entire un- species of wasp and just being completely destroyed <laughs> by this guy. Paperclip, like yeah. not even like an un- an uncurled paperclip, just just uh, the weight of a paperclip, not even like a thumbtack or something. Yeah. Like just no, a blunt paperclip, paperclip. Fall- falls That's on your so bare foot. Funny. I mean, he did say that it is um, <laughs> that is disappointing. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Which, for realistically, when it comes to an insect sting, I feel like if I've been stung by a club horned wasp, I'd be like, "Wow, I'm really, I'm really appointed that I haven't been, that I've not been put in extreme pain by this wasp." But Justin Schmidt over here is like, "Nah, Try give me the harder. pain." So he's th- reviewing these like he's a food critic. Yeah, right? oh like yeah, it's very descriptive, the qualitative description yeah. i really like it yeah, yeah. and you'd think that he got stung on purpose right yeah. that's not actually oh. the case because he's an entomologist obviously <laughs> he gets i mean he gets stung quite a lot i think he's got a sort of garage oh just by working around bugs yeah yeah, yeah i think he's got a sort of garage or a sort of shed just off yeah. his house where he's got a bunch of bugs in i watched a sort of video interview um I'm, i think it's just off his house but i think also his kids were helping with it his wife really likes that he does it because it's yeah. fun and all that sort of stuff He's only been sort of purposely stung by a, a few things, or at least that's what he says. Yeah. But still, um, he like being stung by over 150, that's Awful. insane. So uh, we, we've spoken about, uh, we've spoken a little bit about the scale. Do you want to go through some things on the scale, maybe? Yeah. What do, uh, What are the distinctions between all of the different ratings? I mean, I mean, are there like trends between like... What qualifies as a one versus what qualifies as like a four? Or... Just how much it hurts. Yeah. Like this is. I mean, I, I I can't really sit here and explain to you like sort of. But he hasn't like clearly. Okay, I'm just wondering sit if sit there and I'll punch you. No, you I'm just wondering if he's stated off. like the prerequisites. So this like... is the qual. That's why the qualitative review is really useful. Okay. So let's say um okay let's say a red fire ant for example that is pain right. level one yeah. okay now that is sharp sudden mildly alarming like walking across a shag carpet and reaching for the light switch what um and then you, you get a little shock 
Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Little electric okay. shock. Little yeah. spike. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then you've still got oh, um, pain level one. Let's go to the southern fire ant. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it happens on the third day as you reach for the light switch and you're wondering when you will ever learn. <laughs> <laughs> Um, wow, that's he's like a, a little... he's like back referencing his own reviews, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Interesting. Okay. Uh, then <laughs> I'm just because okay. I thought maybe like tier four would be like it must ha- must have like a burning feeling, cause inflammation. I was going to wonder oh, no, if no, there's no. like so specific things. To none permit. of this is about response, right? So, so we've, we've got a t- we've got a ton of right. data on cool. the bodily response to all of these things. Yeah. The, the entire purpose of the Schmidt Pain Index right. is to look at the pain. Yeah. So. In in that sense, you can't really you can't really put an objective sort of measure on yeah. this this kind of it has to be this kind of pain or that kind of pain. Yeah. It's 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 really about how much does this hurt? Because for example, yeah. like you could have a burning sensation that is like fine. Like you could have sort of a little bit of heartburn or something. And you're like mm, yeah, I guess some, yeah. Or acid reflux and you're like oh that's a bit burny, mm. but it's generally fine. Yeah. Um, and then you can have another kind of pain where it's 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 not burning pain but it is excruciating mm-hmm. right so i mean the kind of pain is almost irrelevant in terms of where it is on the scale it's just right. the level you know purely qualitative there's nothing else no so it's, it's, it's just like how he how he experiences it yeah it's it's yeah. It's, it's fully subjective cool. and then you've got the cool. little qualitative sort of review to sort of um give you a, a better idea of yeah. all of those sort of, the, the actual experience of the pain, whether it's a sort of burning pain or whether it's that sort of sharp pain, all those different things. Okay. So we move that to um, level two, which is the glorious velvet ant. Ooh. Instantaneous, like the surprise of being stabbed. Oh, Is this what shrapnel feels Has he like? Is being stabbed? No. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that being stabbed is actually surprisingly not that painful. Uh, it's apparently or being it's like shot, actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I think being shot can be quite painful. It depends where you're shot, obviously. Yeah. But being stabbed is, uh, apparently, like, it, it can feel like being punched. You don't necessarily realise that you've mm. been stabbed. Mm. Um, and, I mean, the issue with stabbing someone is you could, like, if you stab someone, they're not going to necessarily immediately go down. Yeah. And so you got to you got to keep doing it. Like, you got to keep on going with that oh, thing God. before they're like, oop, you know? Oh lord! Because because I mean, people can get stabbed without really realizing it. I mean, if especially if you're in that sort of high uh, adrenaline situation, yeah. Yeah. Um, you can just feel, oh, they punched me, and then you're like, yeah. oh no, I have I, I am bleeding, you know. Yeah. So <coughs> let's move on to the Western Yellow Jacket, which is kind of like I'm pretty sure Yellow Jackets are kind of like big angry wasps angry in the US. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Um, and I, where else? El- elsewhere? I don't know. We don't, don't have them here, as far as I'm aware. Right. I'm not sure if we have them in Australia. I don't know. I want to be be clear. Jamp is from Australia. I'm from Australia. We're in the UK. Yeah. And I'm saying I don't think we've got... I'm, not, we've got I'm not there anymore. I think we have them uh, here in Australia. No, here in Australia. no not here oh, in did Australia. did I say no. here? Oh, that's right. <laughs> no. Um, no. I don't think didn't. there are... Um, oh, yeah, no. Uh, the most commonly found wasp in the UK is the yellow jacket. Oh, we um, do. Yeah, so I, I guess... Cool. I guess we just don't call them yellow jackets, whereas Americans will tend to call them yellow jackets. Interesting. So... Americans mm. do strange things like that. Yeah, so the Western Yellow Jacket, uh, it is a two, hot and smoky, almost irreverent. Imagine W.C. Fields extinguishing a cigar on your tongue. <laughs> oh. Ooh, that is painful. Ooh. Do you see why this deserves a... Quite a sh- jump a, a, between one and two. Okay, right? I do see why this deserves a Nick, a Nick Nobel now. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the Western Honeybee. Again, it's a two. Burning, corrosive, but you can handle it. A flaming match head lands on your arm and is quenched with lye and then with sulfuric acid. Oh, oh. that sounds sore. Ouch! I kind of want to be stung by a bee now just to see how it feels because I feel like I remember it hurting a lot. But I was a kid and I feel like it would hurt more as a kid than it would as an adult. I've always been a trick because I've never been stung. Really? Uh, yeah. Let's get you stung. Let's, Let's get, get me stung. stung. The thing about being I'm stung is just it. the surprise. It's not even so much the pain, mm. especially when it's something like a bee. It's just how shocking it is. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And so let's go to the absolute worst. Do you have any idea what the absolute worst uh, pain on this sting index is? It's a type of ant. Is it a specific? It I was going to say like a fire ant or something. Some fire ant was one. Oh, it's, was it? It's. A, I think some kinds of fire ant are one. Yeah. But, oh, um, okay. but I also was going to say a type of fire ant I, th- I've he- I heard was like one of the top ones. I'll read you a quote here. According to the index, the most painful insect sting of them all is that of the bullet ant of Central and South American rainforest. Dr. Schmidt has given an unmatched 4+, and describes the sensation of getting stung by one as 
like walking over flaming charcoal with a three-inch rusting nail in your heel. Ow. Sounds like he really wanted a six-part scale. Because he does say it's not even a one and a four plus. Or yeah. a five-part scale. Yeah. But I think that's that makes sense, though, right? Like, in that you don't want a 10 point scale because then or yeah. again, a, a bigger scale because it's hard to get these finer details but when you've got something that's like oh this this almost shouldn't even be on the scale yeah Do you know what yeah. i mean it's not even pain and uh, this is this is so painful that mm-hmm. like i want to differentiate between this four and the other four the other by four. saying yeah this is like they're all a four but this one is like the worst pain ever. Oh, ow. And th- so bullet ants are actually really interesting because um, I w- I'll just give you a, a few facts about these. So have you heard, you might have heard of bullet ants before in the context of a sort of um, coming of age ritual. Have you heard of that before? Oh, yes. Really? Yeah. Do you remember? I, I, well, I can't remember the details, but yeah, essentially, I mean, it's obvious from what Corey said, but essentially it's like um, you get bitten by this ant in order, as like a as like a ritual of... of Passing into adulthood, being a man, I think. Yeah, so in the... Uh, I may butcher this uh, pronunciation. Wait, in it, tribal settings. Where does it bite you? So in the Sateri Maui people, um, uh, the sort of Sateri Maui uh, tribe, I guess, or yeah. the Sateri Maui people in Brazil, they use ant stings, those ant stings, um, uh, to sort of mark you moving into adulthood. So what you need to do is essentially um, the like sort of boys will get together all of the bullet ants um, and then they're... Uh, they're Come on, basically ants. sedated and put into gloves. Oh. So you've got a bunch of ant these ants oh. in gloves. Um <laughs> and all of their stingers are then like facing inwards oh. to where like you know to where you'd put your hand in. Um and then you've got to wear that like, glove twenty times before you're considered a warrior. Twenty times in the course oh. of a year or in the course I, of just a day? Says twenty times. I, but probably ever. But but yeah, in your life. I mean, you're not gonna do it, you're yeah. not gonna be going back for more. But the thing is that the reason they're called bullet ants is because it Apparently, it feels like being mm. shot. Like yeah. it's the pain of being shot. That's why they're called bullet ants. Wow. Oh. Yeah. I wonder what. Painful. I'd love to know what that does because, like, obviously, there's there's there are these traditions, um, in various areas of the world of like coming of age things, um, and that sort of thing. I'd love to know if there's actually like what it does to you, what it does to your brain, what it does to your nervous system. If there's some physiological thing that's like, oh, once you have done this thing, you are now a different thing. Like your your nervous system, your like you as a person has been updated in some fundamental mm. way. Well, I mean, if you t- put it this way, if you take the worst pain of your life, yeah, and you have it twenty times, and then you're a, and then you've got the respect of being a warrior, then you are you know you have come of age sort of thing. Yeah, you can go through the rest of your life knowing I've experienced horrific horrific pain. Yeah, and almost everything else you go through will be measured against that, right? Yeah. And so you're like, oh, well, this isn't that bad. Like, imagine what if, I mean if is, you've had the worst day of your life ever. Yeah. yeah. Every but day after that is going to be... 20 times. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I always say this when I, when like people I know want to learn to skate, that I, I learned to be good at skating once I had a really horrible fall. Um, and then after that, I was like, oh, okay, that was bad. But it wasn't that bad. I didn't like, obviously I could. But that's the thing is, I, I then yeah, was able to skate and not yeah. be worried about it. But then there were still things that I, that could be worse. Like I could yeah. fall off and crack my head open. But for some reason, I'm not scared about it. And so what I'm wondering is, is like, is there some physiological thing that happens to you once you've experienced something that bad? Because you, obviously you can say that, you can logic it out. But then I would love to know if there's actually some something that actually does change. Unfortunately, I didn't research. No, I'm not saying you did. I just mean that would be a really interesting thing to study. Like, uh, Mm -hmm. do you become a different thing having experienced something like that? I mean, I would honestly, I'd go out on a limb and say yes because arguably you become a different thing with all of your experiences. Well, yes, okay. So when I walk through a door, I'm a different thing. No, I mean, like, with with any experience, changes you, right? Um, Yeah, and there there are there are changes. I mean, you could literally talk about trauma and all of that sort of stuff. Those experiences change you, and it's, I mean. I wouldn't necessarily say that putting your hand in that glove 20 times is going to be traumatic because it's sort of, you know, it's a rite of passage. It's a ritual, a thing that you you, you know you're, you're going to do sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and there's all this sort of support around you, that that sort of thing. But, um, but like, it, it, you could see how it could be similar. Like, that extreme amount of pain yeah. could not necessarily rewire your, your brain entirely. Yeah. But it could... I don't know. I mean, your, your brain is plastic. If you do that twenty times, yeah. it's probably gonna. It's probably yeah, gonna have some but that's effect. all I mean is that all of that is hypothetical. It's all like it could do this. It could, and so I would love to know 
I'd love to for somebody to do some study on that of like, are you more more able to go towards pain and not fear it, for example? Um, I think that depends on the person. Though, yeah, doesn't it? exactly. I mean, look, what, what I'm saying to you is that the reason this is all hypothetical is because I'm, it will change your brain. It literally yeah. will because experiences change you. Yes. Um, this sounds abysmal. To be honest, just really painful for a long, long time. 20 times. That's 100 minutes Horrible. of bullet ants. That's ridiculous. Ah, oh my big, god. Strong and not man. just one. Like, multi. I mean, at some yeah, point, yeah. the pain has just got to, like. Just, it is just, worse because you're having to go back to it consciously, knowing that what you experienced last time was really bad. I mean, I feel like after, like, the, maybe the 10th time or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You'd but the second one. Imagine how scary the second one is. Because you know what's coming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God, no. The second. I think the first one would be the worst. And the second would be the second worst. The second worst. <laughs> yeah. And then they'd kind of start getting jumbled up. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. yeah no. Oh, yeah. Good Lord. Does it leave sounds... any physical scarring, do you know? Because um, I feel like getting bitten by that many ants that many times. Not to my knowledge. Um, you know, they can they can suffer. It says that they could suffer intense pain, yeah. hallucinate, and shake uncontrollably. Um, and there hasn't been any, there's not sort of been, been any recordings of deaths from it. Yeah. Because again, like, you know, um, I mean, being stung by these ants it's not deadly it just really 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 hurts yeah um yeah no i mean i i just i i'm not really sure and this is what's really frustrating because it's hard to find this sort of information it's hard to find that sort of information on this and also it wasn't really the focus of this episode but (laughs) i'm I'm glad we had a chat about it but i I guess that's kind of the whole thing for the schmidt pain index the worst thing on it is the bull ant it was made by dr justin schmidt because he worked with insects and he was being Mm. stung a lot and he thought be interesting to, mm. to sort of log the pain of these and as i said it won an Ig Nobel prize and you can probably see why because the man got himself bitten by or stung by 150 different species of mm. insects which is insane and you wrote some very beautiful words about them oh my god Mwah. Mwah. amazing like a menu. i would want to try it you right? should make some a menu yeah. that would be nice yeah. i know like this is i'm I, i'm sitting there reading the, the beasting and i'm like oh mm. oh maybe i should I should sample. Oh, can I can I sample some of your finest yeah. bee, please? Sir? I think I'll have the yellow jacket. Yes, if it wasn't so immoral, it would be a really interesting tourist attraction for him to open, where you could go to like essentially like a restaurant, yeah. and you could sit down and go look at the menu of all mm. the different scales, and go, I want to order one of those, and then they bring it along and they put it on your hand or your arm and it bites you. That's mad. That would be a really That'd good tourist really attraction. Fun. That would yeah. be great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, you get so many blokes doing it for staggers. <laughs> So so man, and you know and if you get be, through they, everyone yeah. on the menu, then you get the label of warrior. Yeah, it's a little badge. <laughs> oh, but yeah, you get the glove. <laughs> I mean, big boy. <laughs> you, get, you get a loyalty card with twenty little stamps on it, and that you can you can wear the glove for yeah. five minutes. Wow, I love how we, <laughs> as you know, capitalists, just destroy cultures and make. How can I monetize this? I'm gonna make money of it. Delicious. <laughs> oh, is this your sacred uh, held belief? No, it's mine now. <laughs> You're going to pay me for it. <laughs> Wear 19 gloves, get the 20th free. <laughs> so that is the Schmidt Pain Index. We're almost done, but I have one more thing for you. It's the Quick Fire Quiz. <gasps> dun, 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 dun. Ow! Edition. Great. <laughs> Very you. good. So the rules are the same as always. I'll ask one question. That's one question between the two of you. The first person to buzz in with the correct answer after finished asking the question wins. What do they win, Jump? Five minutes in the glove. Lord, five minutes in the glove. <laughs> Luke, what is your buzzer? Munch. Jeb, what is your buzzer? Ow. Oh, that was a little ow. What was that? Yeah, it was a level about? one. Level one? Yeah, it was the paperclip one. Very that good. Was. Very that good. was not even a one, the paperclip one. Oh, it wasn't even subpar. So my question for you is, what is the highest value possible on the Schmidt Payne Index? Ow. Luke? Four plus. I suppose four plus is correct. Ding, ding, ding. That's Hooray! right. Technically, it's four. No. Sorry, no. Wrong. How about this? You both get points. Which means oh. you both get the glove. Two and a half minutes in the glove each. Yay, hold Yay. hands. Oh no, it's a full five minutes. <laughs> oh no, we have to hold hands the yeah. whole time. <laughs> Hope it's a big glove. That is it for us today. That is it for us this week. Thank you to all of our patrons. With an extra special thank you to our executive producers, Danito and Rosa Rodriguez. But also thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode down in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday. And why not leave us a nice wee comment? You can support the pod at patreon.com forward slash SciGuys. Or you can find a contact us at SciGuysPod on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and here on YouTube. And at SciGuys on TikTok too. Or you can send us an email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com. That's SciGuysPod at gmail.com. SciGuysPod at gmail.com. You can follow me at NotCory everywhere. Ow. You can follow me at Jumpkin everywhere. Ow. You can follow me at LukeCupforth everywhere. Ow. Goodbye. Ah!
Ah. Oh, wow, that sounds a little ah. bit more. Oh, ah. oh, 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 stop. Oh. Stop. Goodbye, please. Thank you.